Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today is actually recording this the morning of July 18th, Saturday morning. Hope everybody had a good week of trading. Let's jump in, starting with the market. We'll talk about the alerts, talk about our er other current positions, and then we'll jump into kind of a, an update on the day trading stuff. So to start with, here's the S&P. Uh, this red bar here, this was Monday the 13th. Uh, kind of a crazy week of trading. I mean, we had a lot of head fakes in the market. You know, we, we start out here, uh, market looks like it's ripping higher and then just does a complete reversal and ends down here at the lows. Next day, market opens up and starts going down. Looks like a continuation to the downside and then rips your face off back to the upside. And then the next few days, it just kind of bounce around. Big up day, down day, up day. So still continuing to get these big swings. I mean, even a day like this, the range is, uh, let's see, the low was 31.94, the high 32.25. So still a you know 30 plus point range in the S&Ps, which is still a decent range. So still continuing to get that volatility and we'll still continue to get that volatility uh, going forward. So Let's jump into the alerts, and then we'll talk more about, about the market overall as we go through here. Starting with Monday, first trade was an opening trade in SPX. So we added a, a weekly double calendar. We were already holding one, so at that point, then we had two. This one we put on with just four days to expiration. And so uh, I'll get to the closing trade here in a minute. Uh, next trade, rolling adjusting trade in XLK. So we had a, a long put vertical in XLK. That was getting down to four days to expiration, so we went ahead and rolled that out to extend duration. If we look at XLK, which is pretty tech heavy, uh, you can see since we've rolled that, we're up about 232 on that piece. So uh, holding this for that short delta exposure, we're about one to one on our ratio. Uh, so still in a good position, definitely not overly short. I mentioned in last week's video that we are going to, we weren't going to add much short delta, if any, this week, and we didn't, um, just because, you know, I mean, we had this big push up, kind of a grind sideways, and I said, you know, the kind of the path of least resistance in this market is to continue higher, to hit new highs. Uh, we did, I mean, just barely hit a new high all time in the, in the S&Ps and then retracted a little bit, but you know, I still think this thing is going to go higher in the short term. Uh, and again, does that mean we, we just get rid of our shorts and go long? No, absolutely not. I mean, we still need that protection because at any time this thing could tank. Um, you know, one thing to consider is the, you know, all this stimulus money is, is going to be running out in the next couple weeks. You've got the unemployment benefits, that extra 600 and some dollars a week that people are getting, that's going away. We've got... Um, you know, some of these other employer, you know, small business related incentives and stimulus that are going to be going away. Um, and so does that mean that, you know, two weeks, the market's going to crash? No, the market doesn't work that way. Uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't follow the economy. It try to, pro it tries to project in the future what, what, uh, what is going on. And so, you know, I think, um, but I think, I think, what we've seen so far, let's just kind of break this down overall with the with the economy and the markets. You know, what we've seen so far, we had the huge flush, obviously, with the coronavirus, right? And then we had this massive rally, which, you know, I don't know about you guys, I didn't see coming. Um, you know, I, I really thought we were going to, you know, to kind of bottom round. We didn't, I didn't expect this, what they call a V-shaped recovery. Um, but you know, with all the money in the system and, and everything going on, you know, I mean, this thing just, the, the market really just took off. So, but, but now is when, you know, it, it, so I think in the coming months and especially leading up to the election, you know, who knows what'll happen then, but you've got all the stimulus money running out. Um, and, and so the, the spending is going to stop. I mean, there's still, I mean, the unemployment rate is still sky high and and so at some point things are going to not you know the math just doesn't make sense of you know people still spending the money that the way they are when that money runs out they're not going to have that money anymore they a lot of people are still unemployed and so 
uh, you know, the, the rubber is going to meet the road at some point. You know, I think this, this stimulus and everything is still just kind of propping this thing up. At some point, we're going to see some downside. Now, is that going to be next week or is it going to be a year from now? You know, I, I think the delayed effect of this stimulus running out and, and, and the, the Band-Aid that the Fed has put on, um, you know, at, at some point that is somebody's going to have to pay the piper. And so um, that's why we're still keeping short delta. Uh, you know, I mean, and, and we'd like to keep short delta most of the time. But if you remember, if you're trading with us during this period here, you know, we, we were short, 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 short. And then about right here, we started cutting loose some of our short delta, cutting loose some of our short delta. Down here, we were long. And so we benefited from, you know, this area in here. And then obviously not, you know, this, our short delta got hurt. But we, but here's the thing. We've been short since about right, let's call it right here. We've been short right here and we've still made money. And so that that is the key to this methodology is, Managing your deltas, managing a portfolio, portfolio so that you are hedged to the downside if the market tanks, but yet you can still grind out a profit in a massive up move like we like we saw here. So that is what it's all about, my friends. You know, obviously, if we had been long, we would have made a lot more. But hindsight is twenty twenty, and the fact that we can still make money and we're short, and the market goes like this, uh, that's a that's a huge benefit. So. That is what it's all about, is creating a portfolio that can, that can be profitable in an up market, but be protected on the downside. All right, so that's XLK. Closing adjusting trade in GC. So we had uh, two sets of iron condors on. This one got down to 14 days to expiration. We were able to book over 40% of max profit on that piece of the trade and then still holding our other gold iron condor. So let's check that out. So this one's pretty centered and it's pretty close to 40% of max profit as well. So we will we'll be looking to potentially take this one off next week. Um, if we look at our days to expiration, we've still got 39 days to expiration. I'd like to get one on in October, uh, you know, once we get down under 60 days or close to it. So maybe Friday of next week, uh, we may look to enter uh, another one in the October cycle and then, you know, potentially take off our September one. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DE, John Deere. So this one got down to three days to expiration. And so we went ahead and rolled that out to the next cycle with 38. And uh, to keep that short delta exposure in John Deere. So let's take a look at John Deere. John Deere has been very strong. Uh, so price is out of our range here, even after our roll. And so looking for some downside action to get back into range there. You can see this just pretty solid spike here. Uh, over the last week and a half in John Deere. Uh, so apparently people are still loving their tractors. Um, next trade, opening trade in SPY. So we put on a new iron duck in SPY and did this with five contracts. And we did this one with 20 days to expiration. So we've got three different ducks on now. Well, I'll go through it here. So SPY. So this is the one we just put on. So since we've put this on, you know, prices run up the beak. Now, remember for those, especially for those newer traders, kind of when do we take this off early? Um, we, we set our, uh, our date, our calendar to, to expiration. And then we kind of, we put our break even slice kind of right here as the price would start to enter the duck head. Right. And so if price is right here, we, that means we still have over a 21% chance that price could come back here into the duck head. Now, if we get to a point where we're at, we're maxed out on our beak profit, and we have you know less than let's say between ten or 50, even fifteen percent sometimes, depending on how much time is left, we'll just go ahead and take this off, book the beak profit, and move on. We don't need to stay in this thing, and you know not make any more money. We can redeploy that capital, free up that capital, redeploy it into other trades, you know. But for now, we'll hold this. If price continues to rip higher into next week, then we'll just close it out early and, and try to enter a new one in a different, different expiration cycle. The other duck that we have in SPY is this one here with a July 30th expiration. And you can see, um, let's move this date here to the expiration. So 730. So you can see, you know, in this case, we still have move our price slice over here, still have almost a 30% chance, 
you know, getting back into the duck head. Let me widen this out here. So, uh, so we'll hold this. And again, if this thing just rips higher, we may take it off early, but we still have a chance of it getting back into the max profit area, which is what the duck is all about. No risk to the upside, a big potential max profit and limited risk. If we close it out, if it gets down to our downside break, even we also have one in rut. I'll talk about, uh, rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this is one of our long put verticals. This one got down to two days to expiration, so we went ahead and rolled that out to 65 days to expiration. So we skipped over one cycle. We were already holding one, another one in the 37-day cycle, so just to kind of diversify our time frames, rolled that one out. And so let's take a look at ES. So this is the, this is the one with 37 days, or actually now it's got 34 so we've got 34 and 62 days. This is the one with 34. Need some downside action to get back into range there. And then this one is pretty close to where we rolled it. No, no profit or loss on that piece yet. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. Similar situation. Got down to two days expiration. Went ahead and rolled out. Skipped over August. Went ahead and rolled out to September because we still have a, another set in August. So let's look at the Qs. So here is the one in August. We're up about a couple hundred bucks since we did that roll, looking for a little bit more downside action there. And then this is the one in September from that alert. And we, it's gone down a little bit. We're up about 90 bucks since we did that roll. And then while we're here, we've also got a bunker in the queues. Uh, Price has moved higher since we put this on. Uh, so looking for some downside to benefit that. Remember with these bunkers, we want to take them off when we're, we get down around, you know, close to 60 days to expiration. We don't want to, we don't want to let this profit sag into the valley of death. So we want to take that off first, but we've got a little bit of time on this one. Hopefully we can get some downside movement to, uh, to take advantage of that. Closing trade in SPY. So we had, we had another iron duck in SPY. We went ahead and closed this out. Uh, this is one where price did run higher. And so instead of holding on to it, we just went ahead and, booked beak profit on that trade uh, so got at it right at a dollar which is the width of the call spread so you see we have the 310 and the 311 call so it's a dollar wide closed it for a dollar so we booked beak profit on that one next trade opening trade uh okay so this is the other iron deck i already showed you uh put this one on with that at that time had 13 days to expiration Next trade, closing trade in SPX. So we had the two SPX weekly double calendars and kind of what we've been doing recently is we'll have two of them on, close one on Thursday, close one on Friday. So this is the one we closed on uh, on Friday, or excuse me, on Thursday. And so on that one, we booked, let's go to our closed trades. We booked a $215 profit. Uh, the next one, the one on that we closed on the next day on Friday, I'll just show you right now. I mean, we only booked is basically a scratch trade, booked ten bucks, but um, I mean we were we were dead centered on this one, and so if we would have got any type of stabilization in implied volatility or increase, we would have had a really nice winner. But uh, Friday, I mean, with the and the, with the market up and market makers sucking out the uh, sucking out the premium before the weekend this week, uh, volatility just got crushed. So. We were able to scratch out a little bit of winner, but not as good as I had hoped. But that is trading. Uh, let's, get, let's go to trade alerts. And go to, okay, so yeah, this is the one I just went through. Okay, Netflix. So uh, this is something that we haven't really done in a while because uh, last quarter, we kind of took earnings off. <laughs> we took a little break from earnings just with everything going on. A, there was so much opportunity with implied volatility everywhere else. And then B, you know, we, you weren't really getting the implied volatility crush after earnings that you typically do uh, because of the heightened volatility with the coronavirus stuff going on. So uh, jump back in earnings this cycle. You know, it's, it's July 18th. So all the big names are starting to come out with their earnings. The First big one was Netflix. And so what we did here is we put on an earnings iron duck. And so we did this in the cycle, just had one day to expiration in this case. Uh, and then you just exit the next day. 
And so that's exactly what we did. Got a nice credit of $6.20 on this with a one date expiration, which is cool. Uh, that's, that's the power of the implied volatility heightened right before earnings. And so we put that on and then I'll skip over that one. I'll come back to it. And then the next day we waited uh, till about 2.30 in the afternoon. So about 30 minutes before the market closed. This thing was kind of bouncing around. It was kind of getting, it was in the duck head and then it was kind of bouncing out. It was kind of bouncing around. So in that kind of situation, you don't want to let it expire because remember, in fact, let me just go to the platform. I went ahead and put in this theoretical of, so this is the trade that we put on. Uh, and so price was kind of, you know, bouncing around in here. It started the morning, you know, the open up la, the, the night after they announced earnings. So on Thursday evening, I mean, price was way down here and I was thinking, okay, hold, 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 you know, don't, don't go any lower. And then over, overnight, this thing kind of rallied, grinded higher, grinded higher, and then ended up, you know, right in here. And then during the day, it was kind of bouncing around in this area and ended up right here. So right before the market closed, we closed this out, ended up booking right at exactly at $500 of profit. So almost, almost a duck head. We had a potential of 620. Now what happens here? So look where price, uh, look where price expired right here, right? So that is between the short call and the long call. Had we held this and just let it expire, we would be assigned 100, you know, for every one contract, you'd be assigned 100 short shares of Netflix. Okay. We didn't, we didn't want that. So that's, that's why we went ahead and just closed this out, um, before, before the market closed. Now, if price would have been in between the two short strikes in between here and here, and you let it expire, you would have just captured the full beak profit. The position would have been, dis would have disappeared. You'd be, you would have uh, collected max profit, but you just, you've got to be careful, especially right now. I mean, with things as volatile as they are with any kind of stock based equity based ETF stock, we are probably going to close those out pretty close to expiration because we don't want to get in a situation where it expires between here and here we get assigned or it expires between here and here we would get assigned assigned. So if remember, and this is all in the course, but if just as a refresher, if price runs higher up the beak, you can just let that expire because then you get an assignment and an exercise. They cancel each other out. You just keep beak profit. The rest of the contracts disappear. Uh, but it's, it's, it's in between the short and the long call, and it's between the short and the long put that you need to be worried about. That's where you can get assigned. The other options disappear. Then you've got naked stock, either long or short, depending on which side it expires on. So that's why we went ahead and closed that out. Um, and so nice trade in what, you know, a $500 trade per contract overnight in Netflix. So hopefully a lot of you guys caught that one. And so let's go back to this one here. Yeah. So, okay. So on Friday, we also added another weekly double calendar in the next cycle, did this in the seven, 10 day cycle. So, um, put on a new one as applied volatility was contracting. It's a good time to put these on. So that's what we did that. So you can see this one is up about 45 bucks since we put it on, but just going to wait and hold this till near expiration. Try to potentially get another one of these on Monday with the same cycle and then, uh, close them out Thursday and Friday, uh, just like we did before. So these have been working great. And so we'll continue to rinse and repeat. Now, as implied volatility starts to contract, you know, this is, uh, this is SPX. So obviously the height of implied volatility was in March and it has kind of just slowly grinded with little spikes here and there. Uh, but now, you know, the IV percentile is down to 61, IV rank down to 20. And so, um, you know, if this, if this does, if the market does continue to grind higher and implied volatility does continue to grind lower, uh, you know, at some point we will widen out our durations on these weekly double calendars. So instead of doing seven and 10 days, you know, we might go back to our, like we teach in the course, kind of the seven and 21 days. And so we'll just, we're, we're managing these, we're looking at them every time. So we're, we're kind of comparing the seven and 10 versus the seven and 21. Uh, we're still in, in a situation of the options are elevated and this short duration between the front and back week makes a lot of sense. And so we'll continue to do that until it doesn't make sense. So that's the plan there. And then this was the Friday closing trade where we, 
you know, basically scratch that one, book 10 bucks, and we're out of that. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at the rest of the positions. Uh, yeah, natty gas. So we've got this short strangle that was adjusted into a straddle prices hanging out right here. And so we're up about 460 bucks since we did this roll, just waiting for time to pass, hoping that Natty Gas just continues to stabilize in price. I mean, even, even price swings like this, which are pretty solid, you know, as far as size go, but still staying within our range because the, the applied volatility is still elevated in, in Nat Gas as well. So if you look at UNG, IV percentile 63, IV rank 48. So still good premium in there. So we're going to continue to collect that theta and try to get back to profits in natty gas. In bonds, I mean, look at bonds. I mean, this is nuts with everything going on in the markets, with everything going on with the Fed, with everything going on with, you know, interest rates and everything else. I mean, Fed, uh, you know, bonds have just done absolutely nothing, right? I mean, we had this one little by, you know, pop down and then spike back up right back into this little narrow range. I mean, I don't, I don't remember ever seeing bonds be this stagnant for this long of a period of time. It's, it's, it's kind of nutty. So, um, at some point they're going to move, we'll see which way they go. But, uh, but for now we're just, we've got our, um, our adjusted short strangle on here. Price is hanging out in the upper end of the range. If we look at the untested side, the puts still got a decent amount of premium in there. So not looking to roll those puts up yet. Uh, but we will, if this thing continues to rip higher, obviously it comes back into range. That is what we really want to happen. And we'll continue to, to manage this one, you know, back to profits as well. Oops. Not need to go back to the alerts. Uh, Apple. So Apple, we've got this long put vertical on for the short delta exposure. Price is hanging out just outside range there, so need a little bit of downside to get back in. DIA, we've got a couple sets of short call verticals here. That one is is out of range. And then this one, both of these are in August. This one is just inside the range. IWM, we've got a couple of different pieces here, starting with a couple of long put verticals. That one just outside of range. This one just barely outside of range. So again, holding that for that short delta as well as a couple bunkers. So we've got a lot of short delta in IWM. Now this one is, you know, this is down to getting close to that 60 days expiration, right? And so, you know, this is one that we will take off. Now I, I didn't take this, I wasn't real quick to take this off because, you know, price wasn't really sagging. You know, we've got kind of this almost a straight line. You know, oops, that's not a very good depiction. But, you know, straight line down to, you know, from here to here. So it's, it is starting to sag, but, uh, hoping for a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a downside action. I was hoping to get out of this for a tiny bit of profit, but, you know, obviously market ran higher on Friday. I was hoping to get a little bit of a continuation from Thursday's downside action. Didn't get it. So we're probably going to take a loss on this one. A uh, small loser. I mean, we're down a hundred, hundred bucks, 124 bucks. And then, the other one out in October, prices moved up since we put this on, uh, but still, you know, a long ways off here. Still a lot of time for this market to move around. So uh, we'll be holding on to that one for now. QQQ, I mentioned that. Rut. Cool. So we've got another iron duck in rut. So this is one where, um, you know, I talked about it. I put my price slice right as price would enter the beak. Now this one has only got 15%. Uh, chance of price getting back to the duck head. So if price stays right here or goes higher, we will take this one off. So we've right now, as of today, we've got seven days ex expiration. So there's no reason to hold this for another seven days. You know, we're tying up a little over 1800 bucks in capital. Why not take this off, book the big profit, which will be about $130, uh, redeploy that capital into a new trade, whether that's an iron duck or some other high probability trade. So that is the plan there. Uh, SMH, we've got this adjusted strangle. You can see price is out of range. However, if we look at our untested side, still got a little bit of premium left in there. So we haven't rolled the puts up yet. This is in the August cycle. We've got 34 days to expiration. So if we if we do roll this on Monday, we'll stay in August. If uh, if we wait later, then we'll roll it out to September. SPY. Yeah, whenever the ducks in SPY. 
Let's go over the iron condor that we still have. Price is hanging out in the upper end of the range of this iron condor, so we could use a little bit of downside action to get back to center. Uh, but just holding this, um, you know, obviously if price goes out of our break even point and there's very little value left in this put vertical, we'll close that out. And then we'll decide, do we want to keep this for short delta exposure and roll it, or do we want to just close it out? So we'll, we'll see where we're at with everything else in our portfolio at that point and make that decision then. XBI. We've got this short strangle that was adjusted into a straddle. We're at the 105 strike. You see prices hanging out right here in the upper end of the range. If we look at our put side, still a lot of premium in there, so we're not looking to roll that roll those puts up yet. And we're in August with 34 days, so got some time to see if this thing can come back to center. XLK, I went over that one, so we got that long put vertical. So those are all the positions. Those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at our day trading. So let's go here first. Uh, let's go to, where is it? There it is. Okay, so for the week, 713 through 717, a uh, nice solid week, uh, over $4,600 in profit. So nice week. And, you know, the one thing about this week is I was traveling, I had meetings, and so I, and I mentioned in the Facebook group, that you know, I'd be very, doing very little day trading, uh, just because of everything going on. I didn't, I didn't have the time or the uh, attention needed to really focus on it, but still did really well and did a lot of pairs trades, which those don't have to be you know babysat as much as the uh, what we're calling our mighty ninety strategy, uh, which is where we trade in the first ninety minutes of the market open. Uh, those, those have to, I mean, you gotta be there. You gotta be right in front of your computer. You gotta be ready to pull the trigger in and out. Uh, so I didn't do too many of those. However, I did do, uh, quite a few pairs trades and, um, and so I'll kind of break that down. Uh, by the way, so I, I mentioned before the, the class is coming out August 6th. It's going to be at 4 PM central time. So mark your calendars. We'll be sending out more details and links and information to, to get, to save your spot for that. Um, but just to give you an idea, so we've, we've got several day trading strategies, right? And so the first one is, is the one that we've been posting a lot about, and that's what we're calling our Mighty 90 strategy, where we're just trading in the first 90 minutes of the day. And, um, and so that's the first strategy that we're teaching on August 6th. The, the pairs trading and uh, the, other, the other strategies we're going to be doing kind of like a series. So uh, we don't have the dates yet, but it may be the next week, maybe, you know, August 6th, and then the next Thursday, and then the next Thursday, we'll figure out how quickly we were able to, to get all that stuff together to roll those out. Uh, we may do one a month. We'll see. We'll see how quickly we can do that. But uh, but for this first session on August 6th, it's going to be the Mighty 90 strategy, and then we'll layer in the other uh, day trading strategies. Uh, and and, and in, it the sequential order in which we do them is important. So um, just FYI, I just wanted to give you guys kind of an insight on kind of what we're thinking and, and what to expect uh, with this day trading stuff. And then we'll also talk about what we're going to do as far as, um, you know, streaming these and, and calling them out and uh, allowing you guys to follow us and, and see exactly what we're doing. So good week, 4,600 bucks. So let's break this down. The big day was Monday. Uh, you know, had a, had some great pairs trades in the mini NASDAQ versus the mini Russell. Um, and, you know, you look at this and you say, you know, how is this possible? In, in a pairs trade, don't you usually lose on one side and make money on the other? Because uh, they're correlated, so they're moving in opposite in, in similar directions, but you're taking opposite positions. Well, in this case, we did multiple trades on this. So sometimes we we're long NASDAQ short Russell. Sometimes we were short NASDAQ, long Russell. So we reversed it a couple different times. So ended up booking profits on both sides. So so on on, on one pairs trade, you're typically gonna, not going to see positive numbers on both sides. One's going to be a loser. One's going to be a winner, like you see here. Uh, good good uh, pairs trade on gold versus silver. Uh, if you were watching gold and silver, let's just go to the charts for a second. want to kind of break this down a little bit. Um, let's go to silver first. So silver has been spiking uh, pretty significantly. So let's just look at this week. So this was kind of, especially this day, silver was up huge. Gold was not up that big. 
Um, and so there's there's a little bit of a divergence here. And so silver is really spiking, whereas if you look at a chart of gold, you know, it was it was going up as, well, let's see, no, right here. Yeah, no, right here. So right here where silver was spiking, gold was flat, okay? So the pairs trade was taking advantage of that where after silver had spiked up, we were, we were, we were short silver and we were long gold and then gold just kind of stayed steady and silver came back down to reality. And that's, that's part of how we profited on this one. Now there's a lot of criteria that, that goes into that. So, uh, don't, don't go just, <laughs> don't go being crazy on pairs trade. You definitely want to paper trade these before, uh, before you jump in and, and we'll, we'll give you the specific criteria we're using, but, uh, really nice pairs trade there. You know, this trade uh, together costs about a little over $6,000 in capital. Uh, and we captured, you know, almost $1,000 there. And then the minis, you know, these are, you can get pretty small on these. We were doing multiple contracts on these. Um, but I, but depending on the depending on the symbol, uh, I, I should pay better attention. But And this will come out in the class. But... Um, you know, each one of the a contract in each one of these is like, if you're trading during normal market hours is pretty minimal. I think like less than, I mean, it's less than a thousand dollars. I think closer to like 500 bucks. Yeah. I think it's like four or $500 per contract. And so, um, uh, you know, really, you know, small accounts can do this. Large accounts can do this. If you have a really large account, once you get comfortable with it, you can, you can not do the mini, the micros, you can actually do just the NASDAQ versus the Russell. They move exactly the same. And so uh, we're just doing the minis right now. I think a lot of people are going to start out with the minis. So we're going to, as we're, as we're teaching this, we're going to use a lot of the minis. There's no reason to use the big ones, especially when you're starting out, when you can just practice with the micros. Uh, and then we had one just individual trade in the micro ES, pretty much a scratch there, 10 bucks. Uh, and then beyond meat, Booked 85 for a total of 33.62 on the day. So nice way to start the week. Next day, uh, staying really tiny. I think I was only doing one contract here. Uh, in this case, both of those uh, were losers. And then did a pairs trade in Russell versus S&P. That was a little bit of a loser. And then had a decent little winner in Apple with our mighty 90 strategy. Tiny green day, but green is better than red, my friends. Uh, this day, 162, had a couple pairs trades here that were losers, had a basically a scratch pairs trade on notes and bonds, uh, a little loser on this pairs trade, and then a nice winner on beyond to give us a positive day of 162. Again, I was, you know, I mean, one, I just took one trade right there. The rest were pairs trades that can be held a little bit longer. Uh, next day, 477, another nice trade, a pairs trade in gold versus silver. And then four mighty ninety strategy trades. Um, Netflix was kind of the the main culprit of losing here. The others were, uh, you know, Tesla was a tiny loser. Nvidia winner, Facebook winner, but overall four seventy seven positive. And then on Friday to end the week, uh, pairs trade in Nasdaq YM that was positive. Uh, just a uh, uh, just an individual trade on ES was positive. Couple negatives there, and but then a nice winner in Roku to give us a overall profit of almost five fifty. So that was the week of day trading. So don't really have much else to add there, except you know just make sure if you want to follow along, go to the Facebook group, which is uh, Day Trading Options for Income. So if you just go to Facebook, search Day Trading Options for Income, search Navigation Trading, you'll find it. That's where we're at the end of each day. We're we're posting uh, our our daily performance and some other stuff in there. So if you want to follow along, that is the place to be. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Talk to you next week.